Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Over on Instagram, I constantly get shared guitars that are featured on this A Guitar A Day page. So you can go ahead and join the 8,500 people that have followed this guy to see what he finds next, but I thought we'd just go ahead and take a look at some of my favorites. Starting with this Les Paul. Well, apparently it's not a real Les Paul. It looks like one of like the 70s lawsuit styles. It looks like the description calls it a Ginza Les Paul, Ginza. Not even Reverb's ever heard of this brand. They think I'm looking for a Gunna Les Paul. <laughs> what? But man, oh man, do we have a whole bunch of stuff to look at on this one. So our control layout, you know, as compared to a regular Les Paul, it's a bit more spaced out. Our toggle switch is no longer centered right here. It's kind of on the horn. But that aside, our bridge humbucker is upside down, traditionally anyways. But it looks like our neck one is okay. They've rather crudely routed out a middle pickup here. That's a single coil. Gibson actually does have a stock model like that. It's part of the M3 series. It's basically a Les Paul taking on the layout and format of the Gibson Super Strat, the most popular one that they ever made. Eventually I'll get one of those for a full review and demo. But on top of this underneath here, it looks like maybe somebody routed it for a Kaler at one point in time or did some other modification. But you can see there was once a mini toggle switch on this thing as well. So somebody just took what they had and made it an ultimate player. As far as lawsuit era Les Pauls go, this one's not too bad. The worst offense here is the toggle switch being in a goofy location. But oh my goodness. Uh, it, it must have been heavy. That's all I've got to say. I'm impressed it's a set neck though. But somebody took like a little pin router or whatever they got and just Swiss cheesed it all over. I, I mean, it's not necessarily a collectible guitar, so I can't fault the guy. It just goes to show you it was hopefully somebody's player and not just a crazy project gone wrong. Next up here, we have a unique Fender Stratocaster. Okay, so it probably didn't start life as a Fender. It probably started life as like a Squire or some cheap knockoff that somebody's just blatantly put the Fender logo on here. That Let me get a Fender amp logo down here. But you might be curious, well, what is this? Your answer actually lies down here on the body. Somebody has transformed this into like a Fender amp kind of see what we're talking about here now good so you can now play your guitar and your amp at the same time so you've got the grill cloth right here but then we switch back up to here and it all makes sense that's the tolex on the outside of the amp though it looks like they actually did that for the sides of the instrument as well maybe not the cleanest conversion job i've ever seen but i like where they're going with this i always like it when people take copies and just like you know put giant logos on them thinking that they're fooling anybody <laughs> I can't seem to find it, but I swear I've seen at least one custom shop recreation of a guitar that looked very similar as an official Fender model. I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about and will send it to me later on. Here's a Jaguar. It's interesting. I don't think I've ever personally recognized a reverse headstock Jaguar before. Most of those, they go in the correct direction. Looking online, it doesn't look like it's that uncommon, though. I've just never personally paid attention enough to see one. But speaking of strange headstocks, what? Well, what has even gone on here? So we've got one of these 60s EB bases, okay. So the EB2 style kind of has like the 335-esque body shape. You don't see them around too often, but somebody has converted it into an eight string okay so in order to do that it looks like they chopped the headstock off and then just grafted a new piece to make it look you know pretty much factory correct i mean if they would have just put a new big giant gibson veneer on this you might be able to pass it off as a gibson original but you can see the original location of the crown on the headstock as far as the pickups, this looks like something Les Paul himself would have modded. They look very similar to the low impedance pickups. Oh, <laughs> there it is. If you read his description, yeah, it came from Les Paul himself. Okay, yeah, everything makes sense all of a sudden. I'm surprised that he would convert a bass into an H string though. 
I mean, like, I, I get his electronics thing. He was always going for that super clean and always butchered up a bunch of guitars because they were just, you know, probably given to him for free. Why not? Why not experiment? But going that far? I, I didn't know he did that. What a madman. I personally really, really appreciate this. So it looks like some sort of an acoustic, but they've installed like a Telecaster style bridge on it and they have an EMG active pickup. What sells this even more for me is the fact that you can still see the old bridge residue. <laughs> it looks like they put electric guitar strings on here. I could be wrong on that, but you should technically actually be able to use that pickup. Okay then. And now the one that started this whole episode. Check out this SG Jr. Or whatever it started life as. So it probably came from the factory, not white. I'm guessing that's a refinished job and obviously we have a replaced pick guard. But somebody has modified it all the way into this. And it looks like this was done in the early 70s if you can judge based on that because the embossed Gibson logo tells you it's a 1972 pickup. So you've got a neck humbucker, a middle dog-eared P90 with a bridge humbucker. It still has the remaining Vibrola tailpiece here. We just don't have the actual bar part and it's set up as a wraparound tailpiece. But if you take off all the pickups, here's what you're left with. The restoration job. They just slapped a big old piece of mahogany in there, put a P90 in the bridge and called it a day. <laughs> Honestly, I think the restoration job ruined it even further because, I mean, if you're going to do that, you basically have to erase the rest of the history and refinish the whole thing to make it look traditional. As crazy as it sounds, I don't think this looks half bad. The finish isn't very appealing to me, and I don't think they routed these things properly. They look a little bit off-centered and whatnot, but at least it has character. It's crazy, it's goofy. If you were to put a cover on this and then put one of those chrome covers on the P90, I don't think it would look as out of place as it looks now. But I guess at the same time, just having a mahogany block here, it's got a certain vibe to it. It just needs a little race car put in there, and then you got Phil X vibes. Speaking of Phil X, when are we ever going to get his signature Gibson? I've never been a stranger to body modified guitars. I mean, like, check out the Hornless SG or the Shave Down Les Paul Special. This one, I get it. I get why somebody took this Yamaha and was like, hey, I don't want this goofy horn. Chop. I don't want this thing poking me. Chop. This, it's a weird bean shape, but I understand it. It's just a shame that we had to lose such a cool finish on it, though, at the same time. Where was this guitar yesterday for my joke guitar shorts where I had to go buy McDonald's? I had a lot of people not understand the punchline of that episode. Maybe this would have been a better reveal that would have saved me five dollars. This thing itself is a bit garish and weird, but I can appreciate the inventiveness of it, like chopping up the Epiphone headstock to make it look like french fries. Surprisingly good artwork. And they took the time to replace the plastics with yellow. It works. It reminds me of like a, a Bolin creation, you know, like the uh, Batman guitars. And I think our final one today kind of reminds me of like the Tosin Abasi signature guitars, you know, the kind of weird misshapen telecasters except for this one's a little bit more traditional it's weird as this sounds i would actually be okay if fender did something like this it's just like an ultra contoured telecaster so normally your arm contours is like maybe right here on a stratocaster this one adds it to a telecaster and just like encompasses the entire guitar and maybe even sucked out here and then you get a cutaway there but not much good it's going to do you as far as playing. Being a lefty makes it hard to make sense out of this thing. But interesting choice to actually leave a pick card on it still and just paint it. Because that'll actually wear away. I would probably leave the pick card off and just do this. I don't know what I would call this series of telecasters, but you know, this is just crazy enough that it could work in a very limited production. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Remember, don't forget to follow A Guitar A Day on Instagram. Because without this great compilation of stuff, we probably wouldn't have had an episode tonight. Take care.